In my years of teaching R, I've seen many things that went wrong. Code that contained all sorts of mistakes, code that worked but was too complicated, or even code that worked out of pure luck. Statistical programming is surely not a walk in the park. For many of you it's new terrain, your first programming language ever to learn. To spare you some pain and to make it as simple as possible, let's take a look at the three most common mistakes that I see over and over again. Avoiding that will likely save you some time and motivation. So we are talking about number one, recognizing that a given piece of code requires an add-on package. Number two, uppercase and lowercase x is not the same in R. Welcome to case sensitivity. And mistake number three, concatenating within a function to support an argument with a vector. So let's start with number one, the add-on packages. You might already know the basic structure of R. We have R base, which dates back even until the 1980s. That is the very core of R. And we have tons of add-on packages contributed by the user community. R has evolved from a statistical programming language to a full-stack data analytics language. This sort of spectrum enlargement is impossible without user contribution. For you as the end user, that means each time you use R for something that is not already integrated in R base and its accompanying packages, you will have to use an add-on package. If you see code that has something like library ggplot2 or require ggplot2, alarm bells should ring immediately in your brain. That means add-on packages are quite likely required. That, on the other hand, triggers a two-step process. The first one is the download of the package onto your machine. This is done with install.packages and then under quotations the name of the package. Or you take the easy way in our studio and you use the packages interface in the bottom right corner and select install packages. And this leads you to this auto select window over here. This part needs to be done only once. Logically, if you have the package on your machine, you can use it whenever you want. But simply having it downloaded is not enough, which leads to confusion with many R newcomers. You also need to activate the package. And you need to do this each time you start R and you want to use this package. Activation is performed with a library command. Or you have also the easy way available here. You can use the RStudio packages window. You can insert the name of the package or even the first letters. And you will see if the package is available in the list. If not, you have to download it. If the box is not ticked, this means this package is not activated which also means that you have no access to all those nice functions which are hiding within this package. If you're gonna tick it, the library is activated. So ticking this box is the exact same thing as coding library and then the name of this library. And now you are ready to go. You can use the functions in the package and you will not get those error messages saying that function XYZ is not available or not recognized. Again, when you see code that has the library command or the require command in it, check if you have the package already available and then activate it accordingly. The next common mistake we will now tackle is the case sensitivity in R. A sentence like R is case sensitive is easily said and written, but the implications of it are underestimated so often. Users have wasted hundreds of hours debugging code, trying out all sorts of alterations just to find out that the uppercase x should have been a lowercase x. 
This problematic feature not only presents itself in obvious places, like in this example over here. We have my object, which is the numbers from 3 through 7. A very simple numeric vector. Now, if we want to display this object, we simply type the name of the object, which in this case is my object. But watch out, here we get an error message for my object because the O was written in uppercase, while the whole object, my object, is in lowercases, as we can see in this line down here, which is going to work. My object in lowercases throughout gets us the correct output. To avoid this on a programming level, just use lowercases and you are set. If you import datasets, rename them in lowercase format. Now, the problem is that in some R functions, even the arguments use uppercases. This is rare, but it can happen. A classic example is the function cv.glm in the library boot for bootstrapping functions. This is a function used in modeling and machine learning. We can actually take a look at the help section for that function in the boot library. If you might wonder why you cannot find the help section for cv.glm, you got trapped in pitfall number one. This is an add-on package, you need to get it first to even access the help section for it. This function helps you to cross-validate your generalized linear model. In order to be able to do that, you need to provide the numbers of groups you want to split your dataset into. This is done with the parameter k. For a reason beyond my knowledge, the coder of that specific function used uppercase k as the name of the argument. This runs against our convention since most of the arguments of R functions are denoted in lower cases. So I see many students struggling with that function getting error messages of unknown parameter k since they are using a lowercase k. Always keep in mind that R is case sensitive. Watch the functions you are using and of course only use lower cases for your objects to avoid getting errors for the wrong case type. The last common mistake we will take a look at is the concatenate function. A simple C in a code or in a function looks really innocent, doesn't it? But there is so much power behind that little C letter. It lets you put the whole vector instead of a single value into your function. Now, at a very primitive level, let's say a equals 5 through 8, it does not matter. You can either put it that way or you simply type a equals c and then in brackets 5 through 8. As you can see in the environment, R recognizes quite well what you want to do and it gets you the correct output. But this changes when you are using a function and you want to put the whole vector of numbers in there. For our example, we are using the plot.ts function. This one is a derivative of the classic plot function, but it will get you a time series plot. The data you feed into that function does not need to be formatted as a time series to get the line plot. So let's say we have five observations at five distinct time points. Those five observations are in this case 5, 3, 7, 8 and 3. We want to get a line plot of those five values, which should be a time series plot. In order to directly get this info into the function, we have to use the lowercase c, so that the function knows that this is a vector of numbers. This is the single input for the first argument of the function, so the data x in this case. If we run this line, we get a classic time series plot of this simple example. 
that is exactly what we would expect. But what would happen if we would omit this C and the corresponding brackets? Well, the function would think that all those five numbers are the inputs for the arguments 1 through 5, which of course does not make any sense. If we take a look at the help section of this function, we can see that the plot type, labels and so on do not accept a simple numeric value. We do not even get a nonsensical output, we get an error message instead. I would say that this illustrates clearly the power of that one lowercase c. It can make all the difference between a proper vector and an error message. Alright, so those are the three mistakes so commonly made by beginners. Keep this information in mind and save yourself some time and spare yourself also lots of frustration.